English folklore is filled with green people, the green knight, green fairies, the green man, and Jack in the green. Two of the smallest were the green children of Woolpit. It's not precisely known when they first appeared, but it seems to have been around the reign of Stephen from 1135 to 1154, or that of Henry II, 1154 to 1118. One year, during the harvest in the village of Woolpit in Suffolk, England, about 10 miles from Bury St. Edmunds, reapers working near old wolf pits discovered two young children, a girl and a boy. What made these children a peculiarity was that they wore strange clothes, they spoke an unfamiliar language, and most oddly of all, they had green-tinged skin. The children were eventually taken to the local bigwig, Sir Richard de Calne, who was equally baffled by them, though he took them into his household. Attempts were made to feed them for apparently a couple of days, but none were successful until bean plants were introduced, which seemed to be a familiar food to the children and something they readily ate. However, the boy eventually became sick and he died. His older sister had no such problem and even lost the green tinge to her skin as her diet became more diverse and time went on. She eventually learned English, she was baptized, and at some point she took the name of Agnes Barr, allegedly having married a diplomat, Richard Barr. So once she learned English, what did she have to say about where she came from? There are two contemporary accounts, though neither are first-hand sources, and unsurprisingly from this they differ slightly in the telling. But the general story is that the people she came from lived in a place with no sun, but had to quote, a degree of light like what is after sunset. She and her brother wandered off one day when they were tending their father's cattle. It was during this time that they discovered a canyon that they subsequently became lost in, finding their way out via following the sound of bells. When they emerged, they were mystified by the extreme light from the sun and quickly became lost and couldn't find the cavern again. In their search, they were found, as previously described. She also supposedly stated that a land of light was apparently to be seen at a great distance off from her home, which apparently was called St. Martin's Land. She also supposedly stated that a great river separated her home and the land of light. So now the question comes to, well, is there any truth to all of this? As noted, there are two contemporary scholars who recorded the story. A Benedictine abbot, Ralph of Coggeskull, contributor to Chronicon Anglicanum, and William of Newborough, author of Historia Rerum Anglicarum. Abbot Coggeskull names Sir Richard de Carn himself as his source, noting that he had frequently heard the story from him, while the historian Newborough noted that he believed the story because of the weight of so many and such competent witnesses. Assuming the story was true, many have hypothesized as to the origin of the children and their green color, most fancifully some conjecturing that the children were aliens or that they came from another dimension. Less far-fetched, some have posited that arsenic poisoning could account for the children's green coloring as well as their lack of appetite and the boys' poor health. Arsenic has been used in the production of green dyes and it will discolor the skin in a green dotted rash. However, if the children were presenting with a rash, it seems unlikely the villagers would so eagerly take them in and they'd probably rather fear deadly diseases. A more likely cause of the tinge could be chlorosis, a form of anemia characterized by a greenish tint to the skin. This is a condition that was not unheard of in centuries past, even named by 16th century German doctor Johannes Lange as the disease of virgins, with the remedy, according to him, being to have sex. Fast forwarding to the turn of the 20th century, this was again not unheard of among poorly nourished, overworked girls, with the treatment eventually being iron supplements. Okay, so going back to the green children, given the tinge to their skin seems to have faded as the girl began eating a more diverse diet, this is commonly put forth as a reasonable enough explanation for the odd coloring. But what about the girl's supposed description of where she came from? As for the more fantastical elements, like being from a land with no sun, this is generally discounted given her young age and likely vague memories later in life when she was recounting the tale. It's entirely possible she was simply remembering a particularly cloudy time, not exactly uncommon in England. As for the initial language barrier, it has been proposed that the children were Flemish immigrants who lived near Fornham, which was also known as Fornham St. Martin and is only two miles from Bury St. Edmunds. The church in St. Edmunds in the 12th and 13th centuries also had bells that were regularly and loudly rung. In addition, the River Lark runs near Fornham St. Martin, and the area around Bury St. Edmunds is riven with underground passages from flint mines in the area. 
That said, it is noteworthy that the Flemish had been in the country and nearby for a while at this point, and so some think it is unlikely that no one in Sir Richard's household would have recognized the children's language. In rebuttal to the potential issues with them being Flemish, proponents assert that the children could have been English, but like many at the time, only spoke their village's unique dialect, some of which were unintelligible to outsiders. Thus, perhaps most sensibly of all, historian Derek Brewer in his 1998 book The Color Green states, the likely core of the matter is that these very small children, herding or following flocks, strayed from their forest village, spoke little, and in modern terms did not know their own home address. They were probably suffering from chlorosis, a deficiency disease which gives the skin a greenish tint, hence the term green sickness. With a better diet, it disappears. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out my other channel called Highlight History. I am linking to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.